Finally, a movie where I can screw up someone else's life and not my own. Black Mirror's Bandersnatch is the best choose-your-own-adventure since Beware the Purple Peanut Butter. But this modern take provides some twisted psychological scares, and I'm here to decipher every possible ending, as well as provide some Easter eggs along the way. Stick around till the end of this video where I'll include a link to a map where you can find out how exactly to get every ending. So put on some tea and get ready to take the plunge, because we have a deadline to get to. The first and easiest ending you may have encountered occurs roughly 10 minutes in when deciding whether to take the owner of Tuckersoft's development deal. If you're a dumb dumb like me and clicked accept, the game is completed in time for Christmas, but due to it being severely rushed, is given a 0 out of 5 stars. Your verdict? No stars out of 5. Terrible. Stefan has given up his artistic integrity in order to make a subpar product for a big expanding company. I should try again. In essence, he's become a sellout. And this distinction between artistic integrity and the corporate chill is personified by Colin Rittman and Mohan Tacker, respectively. Mohan says of Colin, this man could afford a Lamborghini, but still prefers to roll his own cigarettes. For Colin, video game design isn't about the money, it's about the art. And just to nail home this dichotomy, guess who makes the assistant go out and get him pre-rolled cigarettes and a lion bar? The greedy CEO, of course. Happy birthday to me. And the lion will become synonymous with the Pax Demon, who we'll get into a bit more later. The second ending comes after Stefan agrees to the deal, but after weeks of frustration begins to break down. When his father comes to take him out to the pub, we're given the choice of throwing tea on his computer or shouting at the dude who just wants to give him a free meal. And since tea and electronics don't mix, his work is destroyed and we're forced to start over just like Stefan. If you're one of the cool cats who decides to follow Colin, you'll be treated to a psychedelic scene in which Stefan takes a drug, or is drug, depending on which one you've chosen, and undergoes a hallucinatory experience. The drug itself has the picture of the lion, or Pax Demon, who Stefan calls the Thief of Destiny. He's an enemy in Bandersnatch who essentially kills you and makes you start over, and is referred to as a demon by the old lady in the Jerome F. Davis documentary Stefan puts on later. The drug also parallels the experience Aldous Huxley had while writing his book The Doors of Perception, high on mescaline which Mohan refers to earlier on. While on this trip, Colin tells us that time is a construct and that there are many different realities that intertwine and connect. Therefore, nothing we do matters. And this idea of nothing we do mattering is echoed as well by the old lady in the documentary. If we have no free will and everything is already planned out for us, who cares if we become, say, a murderer? It's not our fault. It's already pre-planned. And to prove that none of this matters because there are multiple realities, Colin dares Stefan to jump over the edge, and if you're like me and chose to go over, well, let's just say you get our third possible ending. Stefan goes splat. Our fourth ending is much more subdued. After getting back from Dr. Haynes, Stefan is actually given a few choices as to what to do with his new medication. One option, only available to those who didn't do the Colin psychedelic trip storyline, is to take the pills. If you choose this, you get our fourth ending in which Stefan completes the game on time, but because the pills have stifled his creativity, the game comes out and is a dud. The reviewer on the show Microchip saying that it was like the creator was on autopilot. So in in this version, no one dies except the metaphorical, creative vision of Stefan. In our fifth and arguably weirdest ending, if you answered that Netflix is controlling Stefan after he refuses to throw tea on his computer, he'll break down and tell his father that he needs to see Dr. Haynes. The doctor tells him why the hell would you pick the most boring of endings, and to remedy this, asks if we should add more action. And of course we're given only two options, yes or fuck yeah. But here is where you can get one of two different endings. If you choose to leap through the window, you'll get stopped by a crew member on the set of Black Mirror who tells Stefan that this isn't part of the script, as the character truly has delved into the madness of this character and does not know who he is. The movie has become his reality. But if you decide to stay and fight the doctor, Stefan's dad barrels in, and after a swift karate chop or kick to the balls, whichever you chose, you sick bastards, you get the same ending of him being taken away by his father screaming hysterically that someone from the future has been talking to him. Then things start to get a little darker. If you chose to kill your father with the ashtray and bury his body, all the scenarios end in Stefan going to jail, but with little twists in between. 
For example, if you tell Mohan you can make the deadline, Colin shows up and you can kill him, in like the weirdest way possible. Because there are multiple realities, he just basically submits. Now if you can't make the deadline, it's actually random who shows up. You either get Kitty, who asks where Colin is, and the dog eventually digs up his body in the garden, which was alluded to in the first scene when the father says, this dog will be the death of us. Or you get Mohan, who is shanked by Stefan off screen, and Colin is arrested for drug use. And if you had the total indecency to chop up your dad, Stefan will at least have enough time to finish the game and get it on store shelves in time for Christmas. If you do this, the game will receive a 5 star rating, but will soon be taken off the shelves when Stefan is found to have chopped up his dad and is promptly sent to prison. This is my personal favorite ending because we then flash forward into the future to find Pearl Rittman, Colin and Kitty's daughter who we saw as a baby, now all grown up and taking on the task of updating Bandersnatch for TV platforms like Netflix. What we are experiencing, what we're watching right now, is her work. We are watching Bandersnatch, and like its previous creator, it has caused her to go mad. You may have also noticed the concept drawings of lions in the background, the symbol of the Bandersnatch. While experiencing an error, we're given the option for her to throw tea over the computer or destroy it, just like Stefan was given. Both of these options end the show. And finally, let's get to the safe and the mysterious passwords, because one of the passwords leads to a hidden ending. Although you're only prompted with two passwords, there are actually four in total, two of which can only be accessed if you visited Colin's house and completed the psychedelic storyline. If you chose Toy as your password, you'll get to revisit the flashback scene with your mom and change the pass by putting your stuffed animal underneath the bed so that mom won't be late for a train in the morning, thereby missing the train that will eventually crash and lead to her death. But this can't be a Black Mirror episode without some morbid twist, and when his mom asks him if he wants to go and you you say yes, which is a new prompt now, you end up on the train, only for that one to crash too. So either way, it looks like the ending proves Colin and the old documentary lady right. You can't change fate. It will always find a way to correct itself. But what about the other passwords? For example, if you type in PAX, you'll be treated to a jump scare of the Bandersnatch demon before being awoken from your nightmare. You'll remember PAX is the name of the demon in Bandersnatch who Stefan calls the Thief of Destiny. If you chose JFD, you'll get another jump scare, but this time by Head Decapitator and Bandersnatch author Jerome F. Davis, JFD of course being his initials. And finally, PAC. PAC referred to by Colin as a government conspiracy program called Program and Control. PAC actually opens the safe where Stefan finds he's been part of this government cover-up program as a test subject for years. He's constantly being watched, given doses of some unknown substances, and his traumatic memories seem to have been manufactured in a film studio. Not to mention it looks like Dr. Haynes has been on it too. The two people Stefan has trusted most in his life, his dad and his doctor, have turned out to be the most deceptive. I hope you stuck around for a special post credit scene in which Stefan puts in a tape entitled Bandersnatch Demo into his cassette player. On it is a bunch of unintelligible static and high-pitched ringing. And for those of you who like Easter eggs, this show has a ton. Like the Metalhead poster, a nod to Season 4's episode featuring killer robotic dogs, the program Nosedive, the same title of Season 3's opener starring Bryce Dallas Howard, and St. Junipers, the hospital where Stefan visits Dr. Haynes, sounds oddly close to Season 3's San Junipero. Let's not forget this symbol here, a picture of Jerome F. Davis's glyph which he used to map out Bandersnatch, which looks just like the white bear mask some of the patrons in Season 2's White Bear episode would wear. Dr. Haynes' first initial is the letter R, and the owner of Season 4's Black Museum was an R. Haynes. Could they somehow be related? And this paperclip is chock full of surprises, including an article titled The Love Machine, referencing a futuristic love machine like Season 4's Hang the DJ. Space Fleet, the favorite show of USS Callister's Meth Damon, and 15 Million Merits, which references a show called Hot Shot, which was a show in Season 1 in which contestants would battle it out to gain their freedom. Briefly at Tuckersoft, we see a poster for Pig in a Poke, a reference to Season 1's National Anthem episode in which the Prime Minister Michael Callow must have sex with a pig in order to save his daughter. He's also mentioned later in the news ticker winning a Celebrity Bake Off, right next to one about a prototype pollinator drone which was used in 
season three's Hated in the Nation. There's also a reference to Liam Monroe, the character who controlled a cartoon bear named Waldo who becomes a dictator in season two's The Waldo Moment. And finally a nod to season four's Crocodile when UK police test groundbreaking memory recall device, which is used by police investigators to nab suspected criminals. But one of the things I loved about this episode was its attention to detail. For example, depending on which cereal you chose at the beginning, it will play that cereal's commercial later on when Stefan tries to hook it up to the VCR. I also enjoyed its underlying discussion of fate versus free will. You have Colin who essentially argues fate controls our lives, therefore nothing matters, while on the other hand we have Dr. Haynes who believes there is free will but nothing we can do to stop the past. Or you can take the dark approach of the documentary lady and say the only thing that exists is the illusion of free will. Black Mirror doesn't tell us what to think about these hefty topics, rather provides different mirrors for which we can re-examine the world we live in. But if there's anything this episode has taught us, it's that our actions have consequences and we can go back and change them. But life isn't like Netflix, and it doesn't have a replay button. If only it were that simple. I hope you enjoy this video and give it a thumbs up. I have a ton of new videos on the horizon, so make sure you're subscribed with the bell on, and I'd love hearing what types of shows or movies you'd like me to do next. If you're looking for that link about getting a specific ending, check out my link below in the description. And until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.